Wake up, Detroit. I'm Joanne Watson, and this is your wake up call. When a brown girl child is born, the earth shifts. The sun is at half mask. The moon waits for her first cry. The ancestors set the table. The flowers turn red as blood. This is your land, continent daughter. With tree trunk legs and branches for arms, this is your soil. Black and fertile as your eyes facing an apartheid Jim Crow current past memory. Some of us begin the removal of shackles at birth. We grow into the armor of struggle quickly. We brew courage in our tea, blend bravery into our Sunday dinners. Joanne Watson, you understand nation building is not a part-time job. This dedicated life is sometimes lonely, a vulnerable choice, but it is the only way you know how to operate. You are wired for the movement in your black women bones, even when tired, still fighting, still organizing, still singing morning spirituals. You are born to lead, even in your own family, the eldest of 10 children born to Jefferson and Lestine. You made Damon, Nefertari, Stephen, Maya. Her children always knew she was larger than life. When you are a woman in the movement, you take the children with you on the journey. You bring the babies with you to your college class. Wake up, Detroit. I'm Joanne Watson. This is the day the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. I don't know about you, but I can't let one day go by without praising his name. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. We know it is God who made us and not we ourselves. So what else is there to do in the morning time but to praise the Lord, to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, glory to God for a brand new day. We don't mind the rain falling, and we need a little baptism, huh? We need uh, some moisture to wipe away bacteria and viruses. We need the water as well as the sunshine, and we understand that uh, this rain may lead to snow. This is Detroit. It can snow any time uh, from October to June, so we recognize where we are and whose we are on this day. It's a good day to remember that we are the clay and God is the potter. It's good to reflect on Isaiah 64, 8, which reminds us that thou, O God, art the potter, and we are the clay, and we are made to be molded by you this day. We thank God for blessing us with one more day, a day to try to prove ourselves worthy, a day to receive assignments, a day to love and to support and enable and to fortify and to lift up the work that God has put before us this day. We certainly want to honor the life and legacy of the Honorable Congressman John Conyers, Jr. on this day, and we invite you to uh, call in, uh, check in, pray, and if you'd like to pay homage to the Honorable John Conyers, Jr., uh, you are welcome to do that, 8680351. 868-4336 are the numbers to call to pay homage to Congressman John Connors, who will be eulogized on Monday at Greater Grace Temple. You know that's on Seven Mile, just south of Telegraph. He will be lying in state this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. And uh, then the funeral will be on Monday at 11 a.m., Greater Grace Temple on Seven Mile, just south of Telegraph. We're grateful for this magnificent leader who could have uh, chosen any other path, but he chose public service. He was uh, one of those uh, icons whose life was larger than uh, any description could uh, be provided for his life. He was larger than life, and one who gave his life for the citizens in the city as he served in public life for more than 50 years, for more than 50, the longest serving African descendant in the halls of Congress, the longest serving African descendant serving in the United States House of Representatives in Congress in the history of the United States of America. This son of Detroit graduated from Northwestern High School, graduated from Wayne State University Law School, uh, who was uh, one who worked in the vineyard with the greatest 
Detroiters, the Honorable Coleman Alexander Young and the Honorable Ermel Henderson, the Honorable Damon J. Keith, who was uh, mentored by Robert Millinder, who worked closely with uh, the jazz greats, uh, the civil rights greats. He was the only person ever endorsed by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the only public official ever endorsed by Dr. King. He was the only public official uh, who, was, who benefited from the actual campaigning of Mother Rosa Parks, whom he hired. He hired her, and she worked in his office for almost 25 years, uh, receiving a modest salary and health care benefits, which allowed her husband and her mother to join her in Detroit for many years until they became ancestors with a quality of life while others were giving Mother Parks plaques and certificates and trophies, he gave her employment, which gave her dignity and respect. And of course, that gave her a front row seat as she worked in his office. She had a front row seat on the activism that was always a part of Conyers' work and his life. He was the go-to person for organized labor, and he was 100% in his vote to support labor like his father before him and his namesake. His father was a union leader and also a military hero. Uh, Congressman Conyers served in the Korean War and was a member of the, of the National Guard. He was one who was connected and served this country. He sponsored H.R. 57, which proclaimed that jazz is the only truly American art genre. He sponsored H.R. 40 at the behest of Reparations Ray Jenkins uh, after Japanese Americans received $20,000 each and a letter of apology in 1988 and 89. Uh, Reparations Ray uh, urged Congressman Conyers to sponsor a bill that would provide reparations for African descendants in response to the horrid, illegal, and inhumane atrocity of enslavement that impacted Africans in this country for 246 years. And in this season, the 400th year, it's been 400 years since Africans were kidnapped and brought to this country to provide labor for free. It's very fitting that reparations, H.R. 40, now has new momentum and is garnering more co-sponsors than ever. So H.R. 40 has new life, has a, a new lease, has new momentum. And we're so grateful to NCOBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America, and also to the uh, National African American Reparations Commission, led by Dr. Ron Daniels, uh, which has not only provided the more fever and more momentum for reparations in this country, but also throughout the Caribbean. There's a Caribbean organization called CARICOM, which has pulled together and galvanized all the Caribbean nations under the leadership of a magnificent leader, Sir Hilary Beckles, who is the chancellor for the University of West Indies. And they have demanded via letters and their voice, reparation payments from countries who, kit, who colonized, countries who benefited, countries who enslaved Africans who had been kidnapped from their homeland and brought to a variety of nations to work for free, including the United States. Congressman Conyers was the one who introduced the MLK federal holiday bill shortly after his assassination. And at the time, many, many scoffers said it'll never happen. They said it, this country would never support a federal holiday honoring a black man like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Fifteen years after Congressman Conyers sponsored the King bill, 15 years after, not only did it pass, it was signed by President Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan was not a red, black, and green president. 
but he signed it. It had momentum, it had the support of the nation. So when we celebrate the King holiday every January, the third Monday, when we uh, watch the momentum of reparations making its way through the House of Congress, when we recognize uh, that uh, Congressman Condes was the go-to person for the peace movement, for the immigration movement, for the voting rights movement, for the single-payer health care movement, for the affordable water movement, for human rights movements. When we recognize this movement, this cavalcade of movements, that are always coming to the fore. We need to acknowledge and honor one who was always present, one who was not afraid to sponsor hearings, to uh, send off a letter, to show up, to be present when it counted. He didn't hide from controversy and uh, put his finger up in the air and see which way the wind was blowing before he took a stand on what was just and what was right. We thank God for his life and his legacy, and uh, it, it is just good to acknowledge the work in the vineyard, along with his great friend, Elijah Cummings, Congressman Elijah Cummings, who has also joined the ancestors at 68, uh, who was his comrade, and, and so many movements and so many legislative activities, they were joined at the hip. Praise God. We also want to uh, say goodbye to uh, Brother Witherspoon, who graduated from Central High School. John Witherspoon, actor. He was Pops in the Friday movie, and Friday too. Uh, graduated of Central High School from Detroit. We acknowledge his life, his service, his star status representing Detroit. We thank God for so many who've made such a difference on so many levels, and not just in this nation, uh, but around the world. There's something special about Detroit. Something special about Detroit. When I saw uh, the great B.B. Winans uh, performing Stan at Elijah Cummings' funeral, uh, it, it was just uh, not only... Uh, a moment to be filled with pride and a sense of uh, awe at his talent, at his, his ability to capture uh, and to resonate uh, that great gospel song that I, I first heard uh, sung by Donnie McClurkin. But I tell you, B.B. Wine has just knocked it out the park at Congressman, Con Congressman Cummings' funeral. Uh, magnificent presentation of Stan. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Want to let everyone know that on Friday, tomorrow, November 1st, there will be a very special automotive summit at the Motor City Casino Hotel, uh, sponsored by a great friend, a longtime colleague of Congressman John Conyers, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Reverend Jesse Jackson is uh, the founder of the Automotive Summit, which is being sponsored by Rainbow Push. And, of course, Reverend Jackson is the founder, president, chairman of the board of Rainbow Push. Rainbow Push has been sponsoring this Automotive Summit for a number of years, and it's a summit which brings every auto company in the world together uh, to uh, make demands for diversity on their boards, among their suppliers, among their employees, among their executives. So Reverend Jesse Jackson looks at every aspect of these automotive giants, uh, from who they uh, purchase their goods from, who serves on their PR marketing staff, who's on their executive team, who is it, who is uh, making decisions about who owns dealerships, who is uh, going to uh, be providing sponsorships for the automotive dealers around the world. And this level of uh, advocacy 
on behalf of pluralism and diversity because people who buy cars, who support the auto industry, are certainly diverse. They certainly uh, make up the demographics of all of the globe. So you cannot have only European males benefiting, profiting from the auto industry. And Reverend Jesse Jackson has made that perfectly clear. And that's why there's an automotive summit, a global automotive summit in Detroit tomorrow at Motor City Casino Hotel in downtown Detroit, just off Grand River. So we certainly want to welcome Reverend Jesse Jackson to Detroit and welcome the opportunity for those persons who have a right to be a part of the profit, who have a right to be among those receiving contracts and jobs and dealerships and board positions, who have a right because you pay the price. We buy cars, we ought to be among those who benefit from contracts and employment opportunities that are made available through the auto industry. And we're so grateful that this Global Automotive Summit is taking place in Detroit tomorrow at the Motor City Casino Hotel, it's beginning at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So we want to uh, invite people to uh, come, register, attend, learn, be engaged, be involved, and uh, find a way to build a connection because particularly in Michigan, where the auto industry is king in terms of the uh, opportunity to uh, gain some traction in, in the corporate arena, it's the auto industry. The auto industry has now moved its uh, auto show, which used to be in January, end of December to January. Now it's been moved now to summertime, which has led to uh, a, renov a revolution of sorts with the uh, convention center downtown. It is uh, uh, causing many of the events that used to be held in the spring to now be sponsored in the fall in order to make room for this summertime auto show. So it'll be very interesting. We want to invite you to uh, send your thoughts and your prayers and your very special uh, cherish moments with the congressman in memory of his work, his support of you and this community and your family to his family. They'd be happy to receive your, your support. And uh, we certainly want to show up in big numbers at Greater Grace Temple on Monday on Seven Mile, just south of Telegraph. Greater Grace Temple at 11 a.m. The service will be and of course, uh, uh, because a crowd is expected, it would be wise to arrive around 10 a.m. on Monday. He visited this station many, many times. I can't count the number of times the Congressman Conyers was a guest on Wake Up Detroit. Uh, he was a guest here more times than I have fingers and toes. He was here a lot, and it was always a blessing. He always left, dropped history. He always uh, uh, brought... Uh, uh, his wonderful sense of purpose and passion and a sense of engagement to God's airways right here on uh, WHPR. He was a, a frequent guest and one who was a, a great friend of R.J. Watkins and of this station. And uh, we will miss uh, the congressman uh, showing up. And he always brought an entourage. Sometimes he bought breakfast. <laughs> Once he showed up with grits and eggs and and a turkey sausage and lined all the food up in the boardroom before he came on the air. That was Congressman Conyers. Of course, he once uh, called me at 4 a.m. I'm thinking, who was calling me at 4 a.m.? It was Congressman Conyers saying he wanted to have a staff meeting and told me to call everybody and tell them to show up at his house because he was up and everybody else ought to be up and let, let's figure out how we're going to help the people <laughs> at 4 a.m. That's Congressman Conyers. Uh, we want to thank you for 
your support of the station. Thank you for your support. And if you'd like to be an ongoing supporter and a patron and one who uh, wants to send a, a special gift to R.J. Watkins, who is our leader here, we invite you to do that at 160 Victor 48203. 160 Victor 48203. It'd be a blessing. I want you to continue to pray for our sister Maxine Willis, who uh, has uh, laid her mother to rest. She's our sweetheart, and we love Maxine, who's given so much to this station, and we want to lift her up and her family and continue to pray for them as they uh, are addressing the enormity of losing your mother. And this world is addressing the enormity of losing Congressman John Conyers. At the age of 90, he's joined the ancestral role of Hall of Fame, Detroiters who will always be honored because of the sacrifice, because of their love, because of their life, because of their legacy. That we will be honoring him with our prayers and his family. That we certainly send uh, prayers to his wife, his children, his brother, his entire family. We send support and compassion and prayers on this day, and we want everyone to do the same. We thank you for being a part of our wake-up call this day, and we know that all of us stand in the need of prayer because none of us came to stay. Every one of us will have an appointed time to join the Ancestral Hall of Fame. Every one of us has... Uh, a due date ahead in which we will be crossing over. So the issue is, what are we doing with the time we have now? How are we serving? How are we enabling? How are we fortifying? Who are we loving? Who are we taking care of? Who are we helping? Who are we assisting? Who on that sick and shut-in list have we visited? What hospital trips have we made? What nursing home trips have we made? What have we done to help young people in our community, even in our own family? How have we provided for those who are without? It's not enough for us to just take care of our own family, take care of ourselves. As we grow in our relationship with the Lord, we should move beyond uh, me, myself, and I and take care of those in the circle around us, in our church, in our neighborhood, at our school, at our workplace among our acquaintances. People can be smiling on the outside and there may be all kind of trouble brewing on the inside. Let us go within. Connect with the Most High. Let us just be still and go into silent prayer and ask the Lord to direct us as we ought to be directed today. Let us go within and ask God to show us where we are to serve today. Point us in, in the right arena where we are to be targeting our resources, our time and our talent and our money. We don't have as much time as we think is later than we think. And we don't know what is ahead. Only God knows the whole picture. So why not take this day and use it as a day to connect with those who have been assigned to you by the Most High God? That's a good thing go into that silent prayer, go into that secret place of the Most High, as it's talked about in Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. We know it is God who made us and not we ourselves. So as we engage in this day where it's going to be raining and rain may turn to snow, as we're going to be addressing some climate changes, it's a good time to think about what changes we can make in terms of our outreach, in terms of our transformation, in terms of our ability to touch and support and enable and lift up others. What shall I render unto God for all his mercy? What shall I render? What shall I give? What shall I give? There's so many who have given so much. And we who have benefited, those to whom much has been given, much is required. So those of us who've been on the receiving end of blessings 
we know we are required to be a blessing to somebody else. Be a blessing. Be a help. Be a support. Be someone who loves not just people who love you, but find a way to love everybody. To forgive everybody. To see everybody as worthy and honorable. To determine that we can be a bridge for others to cross over into a harvest of opportunities. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Paying homage to all those to whom honor is due, and we give God all the praise. Only God is worthy to be praised. Thank you for joining us for Wake Up Detroit on this day. Wake up, Detroit!